Welcome back to Active Defense. My name is Eric. This is episode number 10, continuing coverage of citizens and law enforcement's everyday use of firearms in a responsible defensive manner. I also invite you to send me articles of similar stories from other countries since the principles of self-defense by gun are universal, although they are codified in U.S. law. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to your right, and please become a patron of my channel by the Patreon link in the description below. Also feel free to share your thoughts on active defense and how our, on how our founders provided for our national defense in the comments below. Let's get into it. Okay. So, well guys, this is my first attempt at trying to get this to work well. A whole picture in picture of you watching my narrations of these uh, articles. Well, welcome back to Active Defense. And uh, so let's continue on with these stories. The first one is from obviously this, the Chicago Sun-Times. Man with concealed carry license wound carjacker during the exchange of gunfire in North Austin. Oh, good job for him to be able to um, protect himself. Okay, the man in his, was in his car in the 5500 block of West Crystal Street when the carjacker fired at him early Monday, uh, Chicago police said. Uh, a man with a concealed carry license shot and wounded an armed carjacker during an exchange of gunfire in North Austin on the west side early Monday. The man was in his car in the 5500 block of West Crystal Street when the carjacker, fi when the carjacker fired at him around 1 at 25 a.m., Chicago police said. The man at return fire and hit the carjacker in the chest, police said. He was taken to Loyola University Medical Center in a critical condition. His gun was recovered at the scene. The man with the CCL is not injured. Very good. So, it was, reco it was recovered uh, from there, and so this is exactly the kind of thing I talk about on my channel. People who are legally using their guns, their firearms, to defend themselves and defend others. Well, good job on him. Awesome. Okay, next story. Uh, Texas robbery victim shoots and kills suspect who pulls a gun on him. Okay. A robbery suspect was shot and killed in the early hours of Friday morning on an at an apartment complex in San Antonio after pulling a gun on the would-be victim, according to local media reports. A man was, retur was returning to his apartment around 3.30 a.m. Ooh, that's early. When three males jumped out a jump out a car, hmm. jumped out a car in. I'm assuming that is jumped out of a car in the parking lot and tried to rob him. It tells you, uh, Fox News, please um, a little bit better, you know, proofreading whenever you shoot these things out. Anyways, uh, the victim refused to hand over anything to hand anything over and pulled out his own gun then shot one of the suspects in the neck according to the local news outlet. Good on him for being able to defend himself. The weirdest thing is that I can see a story like this of where somehow the victim becomes the uh, becomes the uh, the aggressor only because he decided to shoot the guy who shot him. It's like somehow what a a anyways, but I'm glad that these stories exist so I can share them with you. Um, okay, the wounded suspect, who is described as a young man, was transported to a local hospital in critical condition and later died from his injuries. The shooting suspect happened in an apartment complex in western San Antonio, Texas. Police did not respond to a request for comments on Monday about the two other suspects involved in the incident. Well, open, open investigation, right? So, okay. Next story. Florida mail carrier 61 mauled to death by a pack of dogs after a truck breaks down. That's really sad. And let's see is where the, the firearm defense comes into play here. 
Okay, a Florida mail carrier who was hospitalized in critical condition after being mauled by a pack of dogs has died from her injuries. Pamela Jane Rock, 61, who is a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. At 61, wow, talk about loving your job. Was attacked by five dogs after her truck broke down on a North Florida road on Sunday afternoon. Putnam County Sheriff's deputies found the woman on the ground when they arrived at the, at the scene in Interla Interlochen Lake Estates on Sunday afternoon. Sheriff's officials said in a Facebook post they found the dogs inside a fence at a nearby home. A nearby resident told deputies that they heard the woman screaming for help and saw five dogs attacking her. Several neighbors tried to pull the dogs off the woman and one shot a gun in the air to scare the dogs away. Responsible, hopefully they pointed it in a relatively safe direction. A good go for them for defending this woman, even though she didn't survive. Deputy uh, deputies attempted to perform first aid on the mail carrier who was severely bleeding before she was transported to a trauma center in Gainesville. She later died as a result of her injuries, the Postal Service uh, said at in a statement on Tuesday. Our hearts are with the victim and her family as they navigate through this, tra through this tragic event. Sheriff H.D. Deloach said, It is imperative that dog owners take responsibility for keeping their animals in a secure location for their safety and those around. The Putnam County Animal Control Unit has taken custody of the dogs. Authorities said that an investigation into the attack is, going, is ongoing and the owners of the dogs have been cooperative thus far. Most likely those dogs are going to end up being put down for attacking a human, but I don't know, it'll depend on how it goes. Sorry for the, for the mail carrier and her family, uh, prayers of comfort go out to them, and um, a good job on the nearby resident who used the gun in a safe manner. Okay. This is the final story right here. A man, in, uh, sorry, a mask intruder shot to death, breaking into Northside resident Madison Police say. This is the La Crosse Tribune. Okay, a masked and possibly armed intruder was shot to death after breaking into a Northside residence early Friday, Madison Police said. The man broke into a home at 1714 Packers a a Avenue about 2.30 a.m. and was fatally shot by one of the people inside. Chief Sean Barnes said at a news conference later Friday morning at the scene, a man, a woman, and a girl were in the duplex at the time the masked man broke in and he said five shots, uh, rather shots had been fired, no one else was hurt. Well, that's good. Uh, police were called by the woman at home and the man who had been in the home uh, met, met them outside and led them to the dead man, police said. Multiple, uh, multiple weapons were found at the scene, but it was immediately clear to whom they belonged. The Dane County Medical Examiner's Office will release the identity of the dead man. Uh, Barnes said the chief did not release the names or ages of the people at the home, but they said, uh, but said they are cooperating with police. Said the girl, he said the girl is older than the, than the toddler. She's with her mother now, and detectives are talking to them to try to figure out this particular residence was targeted. But issues may, uh, what issues may have been involved, Barnes said. Police had no information yet on whether they might face charges. Barnes said there had been a general disturbance type uh, calls in the area and building in the past, but. It wasn't clear if the calls were specifically to the apartment where the, sh where the shooting occurred. Police property records show two residential units at that address. The apartment had a sign in the window that said, Anissa World. With dates that matched the date the 11-year-old Anissa Scott was born and the date she died after being shot uh, in a drive-by shooting at Madison's East Side on August 11, 2020. She was a passenger in a car on East Washington Avenue when occupants from another vehicle opened fire, uh, intending to strike the driver. Later that, uh, that month, more than 1,000 mourners clad in red and white gathered at Capitol Square to remember her. Barnes said she w he wasn't immediately aware of any connection between Scott's death and Friday's break-in and fatal shooting. 
Barnes said the home invasion was the second of two in that neighborhood overnight uh, Thursday. He said he did not believe they were connected, but said the area will get additional police attention over the weekend. Friday's fatal shooting is the seventh killing this year in Madison, Barnes said, although two were deemed justified. Barnes asked anyone with information about the Packers Avenue shooting to call the police at this information. This um, this is the contact information, and obviously tipsters can uh, can remain anonymous. So if you're watching this and you have information, please share it. But good with the self defense. Okay, that is a final story. I hope you enjoyed it. Continuing on. Thanks for watching. And if you're willing, please consider donating at the Patreon link below so that I can continue to improve the quality of the videos, as well as to increase their exposure so the YouTube algorithm puts them in front of more eyes. Have a good night.